Welcome to our FOF Live. We are so excited to be here today. We have a special treat for you. I am Vanessa Dyson. I'm the education manager for the United States. And I happen to have a good number of my educators all together this week as they are working through the events that they do in your dealer's stores. So they're working on their 2024 events. So if you want an event, talk to your dealer and tell them that you want to have one of these wonderful educators to the store. Since we're all together, we thought we would do something special for you guys today. And they're each going to spend like five minutes showing you one of their favorite techniques or feet or features or hoops or whatever it is. They only have five minutes, so that's hard for them to only talk for five minutes. But we have some of your favorites that you've you've seen for a couple years now that we've been doing lives. Um, I know you all love Karen, and unfortunately, she's not with us today. She's out sick, but um, I think she's watching right along with the rest of you to cheer us on. So you're going to see a lot of different things today and a lot of samples that we hope inspire you. If you would like to see, like, say, a full hour Facebook Live on one of these, put it in the comments and we'll take note of that and maybe we can plan a whole hour on that particular topic. So with that, I'm going to let Kathy get started. So thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Frum, and today I'm going to show you one of my favorite techniques on the FOF Creative Icon to the Radiant Stitches. So we can find gradient stitches in the menu number eight in our technique menu. And there are 13 radiant stitches. And if we switch over to our close-up camera here, you can see along this neckline, we have a beautiful radiant stitch to follow the edge of the neckline. Now how a radiant stitch um, is made, you would start with an outline. So I have just a curve drawn on this piece of fabric, just as an example. And you would start with um, choosing your stitch, do it, stitch it, and when your needle stops, you're going to rotate your fabric a, a direction. I usually go to the left, but you can go to the right, just depends on what direction you would like your radiance to go. You touch your start stop button again, and the machine automatically sews backwards, sews your radiant, stops again, you turn it again back to your original direction and you repeat the process. It's so easy. It is one of our exclusive built-in stitches. Um, so it is fun and easy to do on a neckline and any of the straight stitches that connect the radiance in this case end up in a seam allowance because this is going on a neckline. This one is lined, so we can't okay. really see those straight stitches, okay? Now, I'm going to show you another sample, because maybe you're not up for doing a curve. Let's get that in focus for you. So this is actually two radiant stitches done um, in... There you go. We've done two radiant stitches on this uh, hem of this little dress. It's just adorable, don't you think? And so we've paired a long and a short, just um, sequenced those together and repeated it. Now this satin line that you see connecting, that's done afterwards. And that gives it a little bit of a finished look instead of just the straight stitch that typically coordinates with it. So um, that's just a nice way to finish it if you're not putting the radiant stitches right in the seam allowance. So. Thanks for letting me share my favorite technique with Bob. Hey everyone, I got to make an entrance. <laughs> so today, you know me, Wendy. Um, so I'm here, I'm gonna talk about felting. There's uh, a few different ways that you could do felting. I only have five minutes, so I'm gonna talk like a Gilmore girl. Um, so let me lay these down. This is the first one. Is that how we're going to do it? This one is felting on uh, just a denim. And this is a good quality denim where it is very deep indigo on the one side. And on the other side, oh, it's lying. I can't show you. Oh, yes, I can show you. 
and then on the reverse side of this is quite white. So what happens is, and this is a perfect time to use a magnetic hoop because you wouldn't use stabilizer for this particular technique. Um, so you would hoop it with the fabric wrong side up and the um, felting needle will push those white fibers to the wrong side and this is the effect that you would, you would get. And this was just one pass and it's a really nice look and it also this one is a endless design so i was able to do um, multiple hoopings for that or if you have a larger hoop you could try and fit it all in one hooping but i had you know it goes all the way around so i had to do multiple hoopings the second way that you can do felting again i would use my magnetic hoop and this one it may it, it is on a denim jacket however this jacket was a little too light on the wrong side, so it's too close in color, the fibers wouldn't come through. So I ended up using a piece of wool felt, and you would, again, hoop it upside down and lay the wool felt on top, and the fibers will get pushed to the wrong side. The other way that you can do it is this one is um, freestanding. So this one was done with roving. This would be sandwiched, the roving would be sandwiched in between, two layers of water-soluble stabilizer, and the uh, needles will punch it into shape, and then this one also has some additional embroidery on it. So three different ways that you can do that. If you so uh, desire, you could also, come back to me. You can also, um, I don't have a sample of it, but you can use these felting needles and do some free motion work like on the denim or even on top of wool or roving or something, you can even do it um, free motion. You won't catch me doing free motion, but it can be done. So thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm a brushy girl, sorry. Bye. Hi, I'm Nancy Brownstein, and today I'm going to talk to you briefly about two of my favorite feet. I'm doing two because they're somewhat related, and a lot of times people will say, which one should I buy? <laughs> and my answer is that depending upon the effect you want, you might want to get both of them. So I'm going to show you a close-up of, uh, of the feet so you can see what they look like. This is the three-hole yarn foot, and of course I had the hardest time. <laughs> there we go. If I could just hold my hand still, you'd be... Thank you, Meredith. There. So you see there's three holes, and they're kind of far apart, and they're rather large. Then there's the seven-hole cording foot. Man, this is harder than you would imagine. You've been out of it for a long time. I have. Time. I'm out of practice. So you can see that the holes are very small. There's more of them, and um, they're much closer together. So why would you want to use one over the other? The three-hole yarn foot, obviously you can use yarn, but you can also use satin cording. And I made this uh, table runner for Facebook Live that I did on uh, Link for the Holidays, I believe. And I'll just show you the, the big view, and then I'm going to show you a close-up if I can get my hand in the right place. And um, you can see here, this is gold, silver, gold, uh, two gold strands and one strand of silver uh, satin cording that I stitched in the ditch uh, with the three-hole yarn foot. Then I just used the first hole to stitch in the ditch with that gold satin cording. So it gives it a really bold effect. Then for those of you that I, uh, are like me, and at once upon a time you were a hand embroiderer, and now you only do machine embroidery, well, you can use either foot for with all that floss that you've accumulated and no longer use. So you could use floss, you can use uh, pearl cotton, you can use razzle-dazzle, all of those thicker, uh, more cord-like uh, threads. And if you want an effect like, well, first of all, I should probably hold this up so you can see the overall effect. This was made with a circular attachment. And when you come up close, you can see that I used the three-hole yarn foot to give it some texture and interest in the uh, border. Now, with the three-hole yarn foot, you will see a bit of a gap in between the, the uh, floss fibers. If you use the, the seven hole yarn foot, then you they, because the holes are uh, much closer together, 
then you won't see any gap and you can get a nice rainbow effect or um, all sorts of things that are, are rather attractive. And it's the kind of thing where you can, at the last minute, decide, I need to give this thing a little bit more pizzazz. And then you can add it into your borders um, and your garments on home deck. And there's this purse, for instance, that if we can get a close-up of this again, right over here I had a bit of a gap. So I use the three hole yarn put with some floss and it gives it some nice color as well as some texture. So it's, it's a really easy foot to use and our um, creative icon has special stitches for it in the, uh, I think it's the last menu. And uh, you can use many stitches with it as long as they're wide enough to cover the fibers. So it's a lot of fun to use and uh, I hope you check it out. <laughs> I've just been told something very dangerous, and that is that I can talk longer than five minutes. <laughs> so, no, I, I'll try and keep it short. Um, I'm here to tell you about free motion. So, Wendy may not teach you, but I've been teaching it for nearly 30 years, and I absolutely love it. So, Who are what, you? what's that? Who are you? Oh, did I not you say did not I, Well, I could be anybody. I'm Christine Harlan, and I'm an educator that's been working uh, in the field of fiber arts for well over 30 years. Uh, so, and I've been working with SVP now for quite some time. So maybe you all know me, some of you may not, and hopefully I'll get to see you in the future. So, uh, free motion, I'm sure you've heard of free motion. Most people know it from stippling or quilting, uh, using ruler work, things like that for free motion, but it is far more than just that. Uh, one of the things I did want to mention right off the bat is uh, right off the bat, rather, and my back, I guess. But um, the book here, the foot book, is going to tell you. Uh, they have it here on 21, page 21. All the feet that you can use, whether you're going to use a floating foot or whether you're going to use a spring action foot. Um, and they tell you how to use them, so it's a wonderful tool. I highly recommend it. One of the things that I absolutely love to do in free motion is something called thread painting and thread sketching. And so what you can see here from this quick little sample is some free motion here on the branches. You'll see that free motion, whoops, wrong direction. In the actual branches here, you can see uh, thread painting and, and blending of colors going back and forth. You can also see tacking down some fabrics to fringe those. These are silk flowers that have been tacked down using some decorative stitches uh, that are on your machine. You look at free motion in something like this. These are some little landscapes, some really quick landscapes. Definitely love to teach more complicated and detailed landscapes, but this is a good place to start. And when you take a look at it, you can see how we have some free motion <laughs> stitching in the water there and in the sky, and we also have a little free motion in the skies on this one here. And then you'll also see some decorative stitches. I don't know if you can see that or not. Decorative stitches, there we go, on the little uh, barn here in the silo and things like that and in the fields. This one is raw edge applique. So, on this apron here, you can see a lot of applique. Raw edge applique is a form of thread painting or thread sketching. It's where you actually stitch around an applique multiple times, so it's very organic and allows you to keep a raw edge. I definitely recommend using some double-sided fusible underneath your applique pieces. So something like that is also free motion. I am not used to this, so I apologize. There we go. And then last but not least, free motion, if uh, I hear it quite often, is that I'm not an artist. You give me a day, an hour, I'll make you believe that you are. Um, well, I won't make you, but I'll show you that you are. Uh, these are panels. You can get these panels. They're pre-printed, and there's lots of panels in, in various stores that you can pick out. So just ask for a panel. They come in small and large. And if you take a look at the actual content, I'm gonna show you up close 
that you can add a lot of texture and details to your actual panels that will make them just pop. So I'll turn it over here so you can see. Here is the panel. And here's what it looks like when you add texture. You'll see that I have thread painted and blended colors back and forth, done little stippling stitches around here. Here I've added a little yarn. If you take a look here, you can see that the moth has been blended. I'll show you what it looks like before. There it is. And then there you can see the blending. This is chenille yarn that I just stippled over. And then you'll see yarn here. We have these wonderful five packs of some beautiful iridescent cords. And if you can see that, those have been couched over. Looks much better than this, if you can see the difference there. In the leaves, right, here's a leaf. And then here's the leaf adding texture to it. So you can see that you get a lot more dimension if you learn how to thread paint, thread sketch. In the back, this is organic stippling. But here, if you take a look on the side, for those of you that are afraid to use free motion, you can use stitches that are built into your machine already. They're in your quilt category. So those are some ways in which you can do thread painting, thread sketching, and uh, stippling techniques and all those types of things that you can do with free motion. And last but not least, you can also use free motion to do bigger items like this. And in the center here are a lot of flowers. I can show you under the small camera. But every one of these flower groupings was done with free motion. So here you can see they were all tacked down. Three little organza flowers tacked down. And yes, the beads were sewn by hand. But it's much faster to tack them down by free motion than it is to do that with a bar tack. So hopefully you learned something. I'm, I'm happy to teach you more. Um, but not today. <laughs>
And I just did it on both sides. <laughs> All right? Now, how about if you have a quilt or something like that and you would like to add an accent? Here's a uh, banner, and I'm going to try and make it big enough there so you can see it. It's just a wall hanging. But when I put it together, I needed something that would be in here in the red. So I used the mini piping foot, put a little bit of piping in there to give you some definition between the two, particularly like the two white segments where they were kind of bleeding in. And it just, it didn't show anything. It didn't give you any pop or pizzazz, okay? So if you want to see it closer, you can see the mini piping. At the end, get this straight out. And it's right there, just to give you a little bit. It's kind of like a flange, but it's going to be much thinner normally. Okay? Now, what's the difference between regular piping and mini piping, and what's it going to look like? This is an example with mini piping. It has a mini piping that's trimming it around here to give you the effect that you want. All right? If you go to the standard piping, it's much more dominant here. And again, that will get, make it pop out more, but it may not give you the effect that you want. Okay. So here would be the bigger piping. And then here would be the smaller piping. So you can tell the difference in the size between those two and the same, that's basically the same example. Okay. Now, what if you wanted to uh, put piping in? You could put piping in and pull it back out after you're done and give yourself a flange, or you could design a flange that you may want. So in this sample, this used regular piping. All right, and then up here at the top, this is a flange. So the sample looks like this. Again, it'll give you an effect that you may want, and then you can put a pretty applique or something on it to give it some more pizzazz, right? So the, um, all the machines have the piping feed available. It'd be a great accessory for you to have in your collection. Thank you. I am Becky Cyber, and um, I live in cold, sleep-filled Connecticut, and I'm here to talk to you about what I think is an oldie but a goodie, and that's cutwork needles. It's a very tiny package. It packs a lot of punch, though, in that tiny little package. There we go. There are four needles in there. They act like a little pair of scissors, like your little tiny applique scissors or a little knife. And what these needles are designed to do is to cut your fabric so that you do not have to pull out scissors when you're doing one of two techniques. So when you, um, these cutwork needles are designed to do reverse applique and also free, um, freestanding cutwork. So I have two examples here I'm going to put under the camera in a minute. They're the same exact heart, <laughs> and you get a totally different effect. So this, because, you know, Valentine's Day is coming, so why don't we make some cards or little mug rugs or a sweet little quilt for the wall? This is a reverse applique heart that was done with the cut needles. I did not pick up a pair of scissors here to cut out that heart. The needles did all the work for me, and then it went back in and it did the crisscross hatching, the applique, and the triple stitch around the heart. That same design on a piece of sheer, like organza, it's now an applique that you can see through. Imagine this on the bodice of a dress or even on a greeting card. Um, you could do very different designs, or this heart, you could do sheer curtains. 
There's all kinds of applications for this, and it's tough to see on the camera, but it's really quite beautiful close up. So we can create beautiful cut work, and we can do reverse applique. The needles do all the work. This was a quick little uh, table runner at Christmas time. And um, what was fun about this design was I went into the My Sonet library and I said, hey, show me all the cut work designs. There are over 150 cut work designs. These particular one, this tree, when I built this block, it didn't just create the evergreen tree there and the stitching with the star and, and whatnot there, it also uh, created a quilt in a block. So it, we added, I added the borders. The star as well was another reverse applique uh, and all that stitching, that all came with the design. So then what I did was I just uh, sewed them together. I played a little bit with the fun um, stitches that you can get on your creative icons and I put a binding and it's it's a nice little table runner it's a nice hostess gift you're going over to somebody's house for a party um, you can make these up pretty quickly and with Valentine's Day coming you could go into my sonet or actually into the machine has some built-in uh, designs that you can use and a tutorial to go along with it just to show you some other examples. So I made this one a long, long time ago, but it has all kinds of cut work designs on it that some of them are reverse. Most of them are cut work. And what I did was in some cases, I cut them out, let me get around the camera. I cut them out and then uh, put them on top of that fabric. In other cases, I created that cut work and then I put another color fabric behind it. Um, so you can see there's just all kinds of different designs. It's upside down. I love this one. I don't know why, but it's my favorite. So with the pretty rose, where are we going? Oh, there it is. The pretty rose and the leaves all around it. I just think it's so pretty. So imagine um, taking this design and running it down the center of a tablecloth in your endless hoop. You could create quite a beautiful tablecloth and this corner design in the corners of your tablecloth would make quite a stunning addition to your dining room table. I had a pattern, I had a kit for a table runner, which it's not done yet, still working on it. I hadn't made it because uh, I looked at it and I wasn't very excited. Um, and I, then I thought, well, why don't I take all these red squares and put cupboard designs in it? So I went into my sonnet. I found some designs I really liked. And I'm going to show you this, uh, this one because who wants to go cut all those little ovals as an applique? I didn't have to, the needles did all the work for me. So, and the way I made it was I put the red fabric into the hoop with some stabilizer, water soluble stabilizer under it. And I followed my screen on my creative icon and it told me uh, when to use thread. It told me when to use a cut work needle and what color a needle. So I just followed the order, the sequence, it cut out all these little pieces. And then I pulled the hoop off, I put the blue fabric underneath it, and then loaded my turquoise thread, and it finished doing the stitching. So it was super easy, and it was kind of fun to watch, you know? And I kept all the little pieces because I think I can free motion, applique them on another project in the future. So uh, check your drawers. You might actually have some cut work needles you bought a long time ago and forgot about them. Um, if not, go see your local dealer. They have a starter kit that comes with the set of needles and I lost them, they're over here somewhere. Um, it comes with the set of needles. It comes with the tool to hold the needle 
into the hole that you put your needle in to tighten it. I'm sure there's a name for that. And it comes with a CD with five designs that you're you're going to look at them, think they're so awesome. You're going to want to apply them to a project right away. And on that CD is also the instructions for how to do it. If you pull designs off my Sonet, there are also instructions right with the designs to walk you through how to use those cutwork needles. So um, try it. It's fun. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Darrell Anderson. I'm an educator for FAF, and I'm thrilled to show you today the floating stitches. So floating stitches got their name because they appear to float. So I have some on my blouse, and I'll probably put some under here because you're not going to get up close to my blouse enough to see. So when you sew floating stitches, you'll sew, there's two different styles. So we have the floating folded as well as the floating in a joined technique. So this is folded. I have a piece of white fabric here folded. And I stitch the stitch. And then when I open the fabric, the magic appears. Okay? And on this other side, I have an extra another piece of fabric here. This is joining. So when I sew those together and open, there I've just joined two pieces of fabric. Now I can show you some other samples. This is for those who <coughs> have saved all those little pieces of fabric and you want to possibly make a quilt as you go project or you're a crazy quilter. Some people call this spider web it's quilting. So you can just add a piece of fabric, add some <coughs> it, and open the seam and the decoration is there instantly. You don't have to go redecorate the seam. If you're a garment sewer, which I am, but here's a little top or dress for ch a child, and it's called Easy Peasy Pleats, I believe. And all the pleats were sewn in with floating stitches. It's really a cute way to use those floating stitches. I have lots of samples here. This is just of some leftover sashing strips in black. If you look at the back side, you'll see that there's a lot of raw edges. But on the front side, we have floating stitches. We created a piece of fabric that the design is the fabric now in itself. If you're a quilter and you want some patchwork done, this is some charm packet, and you can see that that's all coordinated together with one color. This is joining. There's a table right here that's joined. This is joined with the piecing and the uh, folded technique. Here's another one. This is probably my favorite because we all recognize the flag. And the stripes were pieced in the join technique, and then the blue stars were all one solid piece of fabric in the folded technique. So if you want a closer look there at the two different ways, there you go. Here's just a quick little purse that I made out of the black fabric that I created, and the handle as well. So I've been playing with these folding, uh, floating stitches and I like to put them on garments, but I've also been playing with piecing half square triangles and they got lost out of the bag somewhere, as well as I've done some flying geese uh, squares with or rectangles with the floating stitches. So if you're a garment sewer, these are wonderful to decorate. This is just white on white floating stitches. Isn't that a nice effect? 
that's just a cotton blouse. But I have a sweater here that I made. It didn't have enough of this wild print for the back, so I used a wool knit. And I just decorated the whole back with floating stitches. And that's a 30 weight cotton blendable thread and it coordinates with the front and the color may, is more vivid in real life, believe it or not. So if you haven't tried floating stitches, we have them on the Icon series as well as the Quilt Expression 720. And they're quite fun to use and I think you'll enjoy anything you make with them. And who's next? You. Okay. Oh, you there, okay. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm here to show you yarn couching. It's very similar to freestanding lace. Um, bigger, I like it. Switch this. Yep. This design is built into the Creative Icon 2. It's very easy to do. All you need is your yarn, um, some Aqua Magic, your thread. This is the foot. There's a hole in it. This is the tool for threading the yarn. Very easy. Pull the yarn through the foot and you're ready to embroider. Here is something I'm working on. Uh, might need to show this up front. It's long. What will it be? A table runner or a blanket or a scarf? We'll find out next year. Another thing you can do if you don't want just the yarn, switch back. You can put fabric underneath, and on this design is kind of loose, so you can um, do the yarn couching also on fabric to get another effect. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, <clears throat> my name is Benny, I'm one of your top educators. Um, today I'm actually going to speak about lace stitches, another one of the exclusive stitches here on your creative, or on your, whoop, creative icon too. Um, I was showing off this because uh, some of the samples that I made was made from this, uh, from scraps from this project. So here was um, some leftover marine vinyl. What I did with those scraps was create <clears throat> what do you call it, some napkin rings. And I'll show you over here, some napkin rings out of strips of that leftover marine vinyl. I use the lace stitches on the edge after doing some sequencing here in the center. And those are on your creative icon too. It's a stitch menu eight in subcategory seven. And I did the same thing here, just some leftover marine vinyl. I did a sort of a copper color um, metallic thread down the center, some regular 40 weight <clears throat> uh, embroidery thread down the edges using wash away stabilizer. Um, I wanted to bring up this one again because I actually used a metallic thread even to make the lace. So as tough as metallic threads can be, it's actually not that bad for using it on uh, with this particular stitch technique. Um, What's included with your machine is the, um, what foot you use is the bi-level foot. It's actually included with your machine. Um, you, again, line up your fabric or whatever it is that you're using against one side of the flange. You, underneath, you have a piece of that wash away stabilizer, and you just go along. I like to use the start-stop button because um, it is a little lengthy to try to just use a foot pedal. Just keep guiding your fabric along and, uh, when you get to the edge. Use your uh, selective thread cutter. It'll finish that stitch, take it out, wash away the stabilizer, and big bang boom, you have lace stitch edges. Um, actually, one last thing, uh, my friend Kathy was so kind to show that, again, on a garment, if you had like a, 
a tool at the edge of your, um, you know, at your hem. You can add a little decorative effect here on the edge of your tool using those lace stitches. Just pretty cool. And I'll bring it up. Yeah, and I'll show you up here. Again, it's probably hard to see in there, but that's a nice decorative effect too. You know, again, any hem of your dress or project that you're using. Very nice. So again, that's a, on your creative icon too. That's a stitch menu eight, subcategory is seven. Hi everybody, you all know me. My name is Mickey Hudson and I'm gonna wrap this sucker up. Um, so today uh, I'm gonna be talking about Quilt As You Go. I know, but I also wanna touch on some of the things that were talked about before. Hold on one second. Um, I, when we were discussing earlier about like the felting designs and the um, the floating stitches and the radiant stitches, all of these things can be found not only right on your screen, but you can go right to your help menu. You can go to tips and techniques. And you can find all of the tips, techniques, tips, tricks, all that kind of stuff that you can do on the, the, the Faf Creative Icon too. And when it comes to embroidery, so we have sewing techniques, we have quilting techniques, and we have embroidery techniques. And look at all the different kind of embroidery techniques that we have. So there's cut work needles, there's felting, there's the, the yarn couching. It's all right here. And not only that, but there are also apps that you can get on your smart tablet or phone. And they have all of the instructions and step-by-step, -step, all of that stuff. It is all fabulous. Um, Benny, who was on here, um, whipped this by so fast I had to come and bring it back because this is fabulous. Um, this is done on our MySoNet embroidery software. And this is the photo stitch. You can do many different types of uh, photo stitch to, uh, styles. And this is the linear. And I just absolutely adore this. But I wanted to make sure you guys saw this because it's fabulous. Okay. Also, I want you guys to realize, too, um, that we are educators. We like to talk. And when you tell us we only have five minutes, we get really nervous. So they did fabulous. I just want you to know that you guys see me all the time and I'm, I make it look so easy and like I'm a pro or something, but I get nervous too. And it is really hard to be in front of the camera. You have no idea. And then you got Meredith backstage going to five, two minutes, one minute, boom, 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 stretch it out, pull it up, look up here. Okay. So it is very stressful. So I, they did a fabulous job. Um, and they, I wish they had more time to show you everything because they all just have these wonderful samples and we had to whittle everything down so tightly. Um, so it was really, it's really hard to say five minutes because I just want to talk forever. Um, so, but I'm going to get into my favorite technique. And if you know anything about me, um, I like, oh, one thing before I do that is some of the things, the, the designs like the cut work designs, those can be found on the MySoNet library. And you do not need to have a subscription, although having a subscription is wonderful. But if you have a MySonet enabled device, um, you can get a subscription and then you get access to all of the MySonet library designs, all you want. However, it is also an embroidery uh, website, so you can go and purchase designs. So if you just want to try some of those cutwork designs or yarn couching designs or anything like that, uh, feel free uh, because you can purchase them and they vary in prices and they're they're not expensive. They're relative to the other companies that are out there. So it's really a great resource to get to. Plus, we have the MySonet Studio as well, which will also have instructions and tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff that will support some of this stuff. So it's really, really a great source. So MySonet, uh, the website has the library, mysonet.com has the studio, and it's just wonderful. 
Um, but if you know anything about me, you know that I like my shortcuts. I like to make things, everything as easy as I can. So I am now going to talk about Quilt As You Go. There are four different ways that I like to do Quilt As You Go. And I'm going to show you one of them. Because it one of the things, there are a lot of Quilt As You Go um, techniques out there. And there are, it started back, so some of the old timers with me might remember back, it was the cotton theory probably about 20 years ago. And that was the first time I ever saw a quilt as you go technique. Um, and although it was fabulous for garments and stuff like that, it wasn't my cup of tea personally for quilting. So I started experimenting and playing with different ways to quilt um, as you go. And so I've come up with four and it's, it's not like they're unique because a lot of people do do these. But one of my criteria when I do quilt as you go is I want to have a flat surface. When I rub my hand along my quilt, I don't want to feel any bumps. I want it to feel like I sandwiched it traditionally. So this is one of the ways that I personally do the quilt as you go. And this is my favorite way. So this is why I wanted to show it to you. So I'm going to have you switch over here. So this is my sample. So when you look at my quilt, here's the there we go. All right. So this this is how I started. I was just goofing around one day and playing with uh, the, the, the applique creator and the shape creator. This particular center design, I had made my applique a little bigger than I'd liked. So I ended up going into the embroidery software and pulling a design and filling the center. But the rest is all done on uh, applique creator and shape creator. And then I did a little free motion. Thank you, Christine, for our free motion demonstration, um, because I do like to do free motion. But then I started adding from there. And this is where the quilt as you go trick comes in really cool. Because as we go, if you were to feel this, this is completely flat. There is no seam or there's no bulk in that seam whatsoever. It feels like I sandwiched it. And I'm going to show you quickly how I did that. So here I have, so this would be my, like my center quilt piece here. So this will imagine is my little quilted piece here. And now I want to add my border onto, where's my border? I want to add my border onto my center piece. So what I would do is just take my next border piece and put right sides together and my next back piece and put right sides together. And I'll show you on this side so you can see the stitching. And I'm stitching a quarter of an inch just like I normally would. Now there are a lot of quilt as you go patterns out there that talk about that add, have you add the batting at this point. And that's what I don't like. I don't want the extra bulk. So once I've sewn my two borders on, then I would come over and add my batting. So I, you butt the batting. So you just take your batting and you butt it right up to the edge. And the bi-level foot that comes with the Faf Creative Icon 2 works beautifully because it has a guide right in the center. So you butt the two pieces right up against each other. And you use a bridging, what I call bridging stitch. I think they just recently changed the name. But we all have this stitch. We can find it in our utilities menu. On the Faf Creative icon, you can see right there, it is menu one, and it is stitch number 15. So it's the utilities 115. I'm gonna try and zoom in. And it looks like a really bad EKG. So it can, you can technically use any zigzag or anything that's going to cross over to either side. But this is how I personally butt that up. And it just leaves that nice, smooth finish when it's done. 
So there's no extra bulk to go on. Then, because I'm always working around the edge, so because I'm always working around the edge, it makes it very easy to quilt. I can use all my fun decorative stitches. Some of them were talked about today. And because I'm always just working right around the edge of my quilt. So you can see here I added the, the borders on, and then I embroidered those. And I'm gonna show you how I did that in a minute. And then I added my next row of panels, uh, blocks, and they're ready to be embroidered or stitched. This large piece here, I'm, it's large because I'm gonna add embroidery there. And then I can just choose to use my decorative stitches or more embroidery or just free motion or whatever I wanna do. I can just go bananas. And one of my favorite tools for embroidery surprises a lot of people because it is the endless embroidery hoop. So this is the endless embroidery hoop. And if you're not familiar with this, this just attaches to your machine like so, your five creative icon too, like so. And can we get this handle? And this is why it's one of my favorites, because when you're hooping a quilt, um, it's just easy to tell, come and take this little flip right here and the hoop is open. You can slide your quilt right in there. And it's closed. Whew, that was hard. That was so tough. I'm exhausted. All right, so flip it back over. So, and then when you're done, you can just scooch it up and flip it back down and you're ready to go. So it's really, really fast and quick and easy. And if you've ever done um, like uh, Edge to Edge or any of those other quilting as you go kind of programs, this was the first one that I got. And the first time I stitched it out, I was like, I can digitize this. I'm telling you, if you haven't played with software regarding quilting, so the MySonet embroidery software and turning it into quilting, it's, it's so easy and exciting. So making your own quilting designs is fabulous. It's really quick. If you can point a clicker, you can make them. They're really, really quick and easy. And you can customize them the way you want. So a lot of the pre-programmed designs are designed for a hoop, so they go side to side. Well, I'm creating my own on the software so I can make my start and stop come at the top and the bottom of my endless embroidery hoop. And it just, I can just do miles and miles and it is so, 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 so fast. So with that being said, I think I'm about to wrap it up. So if there's anything else that I can talk about, is there anything that else that I missed? If not, I'm going to get my boss back in here. You don't know how nerve wracking it is to do this in front of the boss. But here is Vanessa. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed some inspiration today. Please put in the comments if there's something that you would like to see as a full uh, live session. Um, you got it. You got a peek at a lot of our educators today, and I I just have to throw out in in uh, Meredith. I don't know if you can turn the camera or not. We are at Sew and Sweep in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania. And so we are right now in their classroom. We kind of invaded their space in order to do the Facebook Live. But take a look at this wallpaper over here on their wall. I think we all need that wallpaper in our sewing rooms. Is that not the cutest thing? Uh, we, we've been here using their retreat center as a place for the educators to all be together and work on these events for 2024 together. So. If you're looking for a quilt retreat, I highly recommend them. We're at Sew and Sweep in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania. Um, so check them out. They have a website online. And uh, give, us some, give us some feedback. We hope you enjoyed today. Bye, everybody.